How important are cloud technologies in today's academic programs? Okay, it's a good question. Um, well, if you compare where are cloud technologies already taking place in today's world, there is the consumer, of course, every one of us in the private life are experiencing cloud technologies in mobile phones and everything that we use in applications. Then in enterprises uh, that uh, start using cloud solutions more um, interwovenly with their on-premise solutions. And then if you look into the teaching world where cloud solutions have not yet uh, took a foothold. Um, so where I see that we need to much more uh, teach our students on cloud technologies, not only in the business field and also for uh, legal and, and, and business relations, but also with a clear and deep understanding of how cloud technologies are put together. So what we do at uh, the University of Bechtel in our teaching, we currently prepare a uh, lecture that both in bachelor and master program that integrates um, deep skills in not only configuring cloud technology stacks that are working, but also to um, to form an end-to-end -end project of how to establish and to um, configure such cloud technologies to get a good understanding when they join the job market that they're ready to implement them from scratch. Uh, who are the essential members of the typical SAP curriculum projects? Yeah, if we, or when we create a curriculum material, as we call it, teaching learning environment. So uh, from our didactic standpoint, um, any teaching environment should include three main um, elements. Uh, one is the system landscape. So in our case, most likely SAP system landscape. So not one system, but, but sometimes many systems. Um, then we have the model company or the model that, uh, that, that resembles the the, not theoretical content, but the realistic company that we try to put students into so they can feel as they would work in a real company. And then the third component is the teaching material itself, which you can relate to as a, as a curriculum. So a curriculum development does not start with the material, but it takes into account the systems as well as the uh, model. And in such projects, in order to set them up from scratch in the most optimal way, you need to have a um, a good program and, and project management team uh, put in place that, that oversees all of the projects running at the same time. Then you should have one part uh, or one role in the team that has good experience in teaching uh, curriculum development um, from, from what, what we do in Network, for example, for many years. Then we need to, enter, uh, you know, to, to relate to the SAP product uh, management teams. There's a very needed um, exchange with them to understand the technical details and the application itself. And we need to have, of course, or we need to include academic expertise from professors who are specialized in those fields, because those are the experts, not us. And of course, they teach on a, on a constant basis, so they know it's especially what students need and what they, they are colleagues and lecturers need in, in teaching. Uh, what are key tasks and milestones during the development of new curricula? Okay, that's another very uh, key question. Um, uh, what, what we struggled with in the beginning, specific, uh, specifically with the cloud solutions from SAP, is that we, we could uh, simply not find the right context within SAP, which kind of uh, prolonged the first phase, as we call it, the preparation phase. So we would not like to start any curriculum design project without having the correct um, context in SAP. To find context in academia is easy, we, we work with those uh, professors, we have almost 4,000 lecturers that we uh, network uh, work, uh, work with on, on a constant basis. So once we had the uh, correct SAP context, and again, this is not only a technical context, we also wanted to have a more application consultant type of a, of a co-worker that would understand not the technical details, but also how this is put into practice with customers. Then, of course, you need some, some product management um, leadership team that kind of oversees budgeting and, and, and other tasks. So this is, this is one thing. So once we had the right context ready, we then enter into what we call the evaluation phase, which usually takes up to three, four months, where um, everyone in the team is given a, a teaching trial demo environment to really start looking at the functionality of the solution and to develop first didactic concepts as well as more operations related concepts. So how would this be looking when students are given the solution in the long run? And um, then there's a milestone or quality gate that we usually refer back to the um, SAP executive board. So we get approval to go into the next phase 
which then is a six month development phase. So we get everyone together in a, in a bi-weekly agile sprint mode of, of a curriculum development project. And after six months, we hope to have a, a very complete, better, let's say better version of the curriculum material, a system environment that we know how we can host it and especially how we can scale it. So that not only two or three universities, but hundreds of them can use it globally. And then last but not least, once that is a milestone and then qualificated, then this is going to more a pilot or productive phase where then students, uh, student groups with their professors can start using it on either a pilot environment or a productive environment. So that's the what we found to be working as best. So you see that's in nine months, so the typical um, time uh, for, for human development as well. So we take the same approach and say we need about nine months for a good curriculum to be created, to be given to the academic world.